Hi, this is Danny Lewis, course developer and tutor here at Point Blank Online. And this week's video is basically going to involve constructing a custom effects rack in Ableton Live. And it's been designed for creating stereo width in a safe and flexible way. Now, this is the kind of thing that you do a lot on the Ableton Live Level 2 sound design course. But on this video, we're going to take you through step by step. I'm going to do a demonstration first of what it sounds like. And then we're going to look at actually building the rack so that you can keep it for yourselves. So I've got this really nice deep house idea on the go and one of the things that is really making this track is a custom effects rack that I've built. So I'm just going to show you, I'm going to solo the pad. This at the moment is running through my custom effect. I'm just going to open the filter and let's take the send off. So this is the sound before applying the effect and now feeding through to the effect. It's a stereo widening effect. And we've got the ability to adjust the pitch of the left side, the pitch of the right side, even just to test it in mono two, and to filter away some of the highs and to filter away some of the lows. So we've got full control. What I'm gonna do is to basically take you through building this effect so you can use it for yourselves as well. It's quite a complex effect, but it's gonna be worthwhile because you're gonna have it as something you can add to your collection. So this effects rack, I built it shortly before I recorded the video you've just seen and I didn't actually make any notes of what I was doing, I was just kind of doing it on the fly. So I'm going to keep it open here and we're going to go through the steps as much as I can remember them. So it's going to be a really nice experience for you guys because you're going to, you're going to find out some of the decisions behind the effects and the, and the placement in the chain and so on. So I'm going to keep this here and I'm going to set up now a new return track. So we're going to do this. And onto this, I'm going to set up the audio effects rack. So this is our blank canvas. We can put a whole bunch of effects inside here. So what we're going to start off with is a delay effect. And that's because a lot of widening techniques start with a delay, so a copy of the original sound. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just explain a little bit why I chose a filter delay. I was looking within the complement of delay effects inside live for a delay that allowed me to discreetly position the sound in the stereo picture. So that was my reasoning behind choosing that. Let me just show you here if we go through the delays. The simple delay, if I bring this through here, we've got a dry and wet mix control. I can't actually pan the individual delays there. So let me take that away. The ping pong delay, let's find that. Let's bring this through. And this is once again, dry, wet mix, no pan control. So that was my reasoning behind picking the filter delay. It's a bit of overkill because in fact that you've got three delays. I don't need the others. I'm going to take these away and it's going to be nice and clear. This chain is basically going to be my left delay. So I'm going to rename and what I want to do here, this is very important, is to turn the filter off. Okay, so I just want a normal copy of the sound. I'm also going to take the tempo sync off because what I want is a very short delay. Something about seven milliseconds is a good tried and tested amount. We're going to take the feedback down to zero so there's only one echo. And you can see here that the pan is 50 left. I'm also going to take the dry to silence so we've got nothing. So it's only the left channel. And I'm just going to take this down to zero dB here as well. So that's the starting point. So we've got the left side sorted. And what we can do is add the other effect that I'm going to use, which is designed to shift the pitch. Okay, so I'm going to do this now. And what we've got is a couple of options. We could potentially use the grain delay because that's got the ability to shift the pitch in there. But to be honest with you, let me just show you here if I place this after. The problem with this is, is that there is a noticeable kind of flavor to the sound that I would say is detrimental to this width enhancement effect. So I'm not going to use that. I have chosen to use the frequency shifter, which also can actually really radically change the tone of the sound. And uh, it's much more of a sound design technique, but there is a, a fine control here that I'm going to use, and that's going to be a better way to work with this. So just very subtle shifts in pitch, because what we want to do is to have the original sound where it is, but then using the return here, add something at the left and the right that is different in pitch to the original so that we get a nice amount of stereo width without the risk of any kind of phasing where it's gonna basically take away some of the energy of the sound. 
So the frequency shifter is here to do the job of adjusting the pitch and we're gonna use a fine control to do that. Dry wet mix at 100%. So essentially what we've got here is the left side and I'm gonna just name this so you can see it. So left delay and then we're gonna say over here rename so command plus R or control plus R if you're PC. So we're gonna say here left frequency shift. So it's very clear as to what's going on. Now what I'm gonna do is duplicate this chain. So command plus D or control plus D and this is gonna be right delay. So let's take away that. And what we can do is just take this off, turn this on so it's nice and clear, take the filter off again take this off and this time we're going to go for 14 milliseconds so let's double the seven over here let's take the feedback down and of course the dry mix is nice and low here let's just take this and set that to zero like we did with the other one so this is literally showing you that this is the right hand side so we've got the controls here and what i could do is i'll show you how this sounds let's take something that's very clear to hear what the sound is let's solo the block and I'm going to do it mono first and we're going to show you how it sounds as it is at the moment. So can you hear that? We can hear this little difference in the earphones now. I'm just going to turn it up my side. Let's take it off. But if you're listening on headphones, you can really hear that there's an extra stereo width there now. Now let me show you something. Let's adjust this. And let's do the same with the left. But let's go a bit further. Now you could hear the tone was shifting there, but solo just the effect return. You can really hear that in your left ear going down very low. And now, let me just solo this one. So we've got a nice stereo image from the original pitch with then also a copy, but pitch shifted down on the left and the right independently. So this is the kind of the raw foundation of the sound. Now let me just remind myself what else I did. So just coming back here, we can see this going on. So we've got the left delay and then the right delay. And what we've got also is afterwards, we have an EQ, a filter and a utility. So these are important ingredients. After that, it's a case of setting up the actual macro controls. So let's take a look. We've got the EQ3, auto filter and utility afterwards. Let's bring these in, but these are coming in afterwards. So let's drop in the EQ3 after this audio effects rack. We're gonna nest them together soon. So that's there. We're gonna to go to the auto filter. And then we are gonna to go to utility. So I'll tell you the reasoning behind this. What it is is that it's nice to get some control here because we can adjust the actual EQ settings of the effect. So we could do that. So this is the control. So it has value in both insert and also return configuration. So we can roll off some of the bass. We can roll off some of the highs. In fact, what I did on my original was just to use the EQ3 for the lows. And then I used this filter for the highs, just for a little bit of variation. And I'm gonna take the cue down and open this up. So that's gonna be what we're gonna start off with. And we are gonna map these controls. Now, I'll tell you the reason for the utility. One of the things you, when you're adding these stereo effects is that they can sometimes have an issue if you were to actually listen in mono. And I know a lot, a lot of people are listening in mono these days, but you know, some club systems, for example, there could be mono. So you wanna make sure your sounds are not disappearing in the mix. So you can do a width check. You can take this down to zero. And we're gonna map that as a macro control. So before I do that, let's just select these. I'm doing shift plus click, and they're all selected, right click group. So you can see now that we've got over here some macro controls, and we've also got some macro controls here. We will need to set up these macro controls for the actual devices contained within this audio effects rack, but we can also then get these over here to be the master controls and to remote control these here. So all we ever need to see really is the whole thing condensed down like this. So we could just literally have those eight controls and we can map these. I didn't use all of them, um, but uh, that's a nice tidy way to be working. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rename this stereo wide widener, call it whatever you want. So um, that's 
the initial setup is just expose all the uh, the information again so you can see what's going on let's bring the macro here expose this too so you can see what's going on and in the next section what we'll do is we'll set this up with the macros so that we get that nice hands-on control so I did a little bit of housekeeping in the gap and you can see here the left delay all sorted out and now the actual effects afterwards these are shared so that's why I've named them shared EQ so these both of these chains are running into these effects so the right delay right frequency shift into shared EQ shared auto filter so what we're going to do is we're going to set up the shared elements first so that includes the width here. So I'm going to map this onto a control. I'm going to stick this onto macro eight. And then also what I'm going to do is map this onto, this is a low cut by the way. So I'm going to place that to the left on macro five. And then my filter, I'm going to place this next to that. So we're going to have here on six, the frequency. Now we need to do a little bit of work on this because the default parameters are not what I would be looking for to be honest. So we're going to come over here to the map mode and my stereo separation, I want to make the maximum to 100%. So I'm going to take that down. So there we go. So you can see here now on the macro, we can only go to 100% or 0%. So 0% is going to make it mono. So we can do the check and then we go 100%, which I would say is the default. So the next thing to do is to work on the frequency. So this is of the EQ3, this is the low cut frequency. The maximum here, I'm gonna just take this to a slightly different value. So I'm gonna take this. We don't wanna be having this to be too thin really. I think maybe just something like 1K would be good. And uh, the minimum value here, let's just leave it at 50. So you can see now we've got a range for the low cut anywhere from 50 Hertz up to nearly 1K. Okay, so that's just going to give us a low cut. And uh, I can't remember the default value that I had it set there, but I'm probably going to take it about 150 or so. So that, I'm going to rename this, I'm going to say low cut. And this now becomes the, uh, this is the low pass filter. So we're going to take away the highs. So this is like a high cut. And the minimum value here, I'm going to take a lot higher. Let's maybe take this to about 4K. The maximum value on there is fine. So if I now rename this high cut and the default value, I'm just gonna open that, just keep it nice and clear. So this is remote controlling, the auto filter that's inside. Okay, it's what's happening with that. So these three are set, you know, you can color these as well. So we see what's working. And now we need to set these here, but we can only do that when we set these inside because we've got this nested within. So what we're looking for is to adjust the frequency, but we're gonna go for the fine tuning frequency. So I'm on the left here, I'm gonna right click on this control and we're gonna to map to macro one. We're gonna to go to the right chain, go to the fine on here and go to macro two. So this becomes left pitch that's what I'm going to call it and then this is right pitch and the values here the default settings I'm not happy with that the maximum I'm going to take down because I found when you increase the actual frequency to a positive value it can sound a little bit warbled it sounds um, too futuristic I'm aiming for something quite subtle here and natural so anything from the zero hertz point down to minus 500 is gonna work nicely for this context. So now you can see here, we can adjust these up to zero. Anything less is gonna create that nice pitch shift down. But we want these controls to be over here. So what I do is I right click on this one. I'm gonna say map to macro one. We can see that over here. And now this, I'm gonna to say to macro two. So there we go, we've got a replication, remote controlling that. So let's get the colors sorted out. And that's looking good now. So we've got that functionality. So let's tuck everything away. We've now got this set of controls to be working with and we can set it up so that we can work with the sound. Let me just go here with this clap. I'm gonna solo. Let's increase this so that we can hear the effect coming through and I'm gonna make some adjustments. 
So can you hear that? Independent control the pitch, left and right, to create that nice width and separation. Rolling down the highs, bit of low cut. And let's take that solo off. It's already got the original effect here. So that's with no width enhancement. Dialing it in now. So it doesn't need to be a lot. That's really actually quite nice at that subtle amount there. So it's a great stereo width effect. It's got lots of flexibility. You can follow the steps to build that for yourselves. Click on save and save it into your library. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. As I said, it's very similar to the kind of stuff that we explore on the sound design course for Ableton Live. After the break, you're going to see some information about the unique feedback that we provide to our students at Point Blank Online. At Point Blank Online, you've got two methods of interaction with your tutor. Firstly, you've got the weekly online masterclass, which is in real time. And then also we've got feedback on your assignments, and that's known as DVR. So the online masterclass is a one hour session you get with your tutor every week. You can ask questions about the lesson content and get instant feedback and also demonstrations on the fly from their computer desktop with our streaming technology. DVR stands for Direct Video Response and the concept is really simple. You upload your Ableton Logic or Cubase project file to your tutor, he downloads it and then pushes record on the screen capturing software and evaluates your work, so basically giving you one-to-one -one feedback. You see all of the mouse movements and any parameter changes made by your tutor. It's kind of like sitting in the studio over their shoulder watching what they're doing whilst they work. We have found the DVR process has truly revolutionized the way that we teach online and the results speak for themselves. Book your place on the course now by visiting pointblankonline.net.